I've been searching for the smallest case available to buy that can fit a 4060. I started with a 5 liter case from Laser 3D and downsized further to a 3.9 liter Belka 3. Last month, I built in a case from a company so new, they don't even have a website. And after all of that, the smallest case flew under my radar the whole time. This is my 3.59 liter 4060 gaming PC, and it just might be the smallest case available that fits a 4060. Okay, so back in October, Gigabyte sent over their low-profile 4060 GPU. And at the time, I wanted to find a case that would take advantage of its low-profile design, and I landed on the HT5 from Laser 3D. I really like that case. It fit the HT Plex 250 along with that low-profile 4060 perfectly. But it also got me on a kick to find other super small cases that could fit a 4060. So last week, built a 4.4 liter 4060 PC in the Gemcase C9, which is a new case from a new company. But the smallest one I've built so far is in the Velka 3. That one is 3.9 liters, and at the time, I thought it was the smallest case available that could also fit a 4060. Now that's without modding and using only off-the-shelf parts, which is really the whole point of this series, right? It's to showcase super small PCs that you can also build at home without the use of special equipment or modding. And continuing on with those very small 4060 PCs, I have now built this. This case is called the Yokto and it's from a company called Nerdware. And it's also the smallest 4060 build I've done yet. So this case flew under my radar most of last year. It was released back in March, but I only found out about it in November. And after talking to them for a bit, they were actually able to send me one over in January. Again, this is an incredibly small case and it's very smartly designed to fit any mini ITX motherboard along with a low profile GPU up to 185 millimeters in length the HD Plex 250, and a CPU cooler up to 40 millimeters in height. They also have a Yokto Plus. That option is slightly taller to accommodate a 48 millimeter CPU cooler and a two and a half inch drive while still being super small at four liters. It's also got a very classy design in my opinion. It's got an all black aesthetic and brass accents. It's got a satisfying and clicky power button. And then it has a large brass base plate across the bottom, which gives the whole case rigidity. And it also shows as a thin brass line across the front, which also looks really nice in my opinion. Even these included screws are brass to tie in with the whole aesthetic. There's also ventilation on either side, along with some on the bottom where the GPU fans are gonna be facing, and then across the entire top panel. This is a handcrafted case that's made to order as well. So it uses a combination of those brass pieces I was talking about and a 3D printed base but that 3D printed base is created as a single piece. So that should add to the overall rigidity and means that there's also no visible seams. It also seems pretty well made. The layers are very fine, making it not immediately obvious that it's printed. But if you do look for it in spots, you can see some imperfections. And I imagine that's gonna vary unit by unit. It's also printed using PETG. That has a higher heat tolerance than some other common plastics and it's not gonna soften or melt from the heat of your components. So something else I think is really important to point out as well is that even though this is the smallest 4060 PC I've built, if you are planning to travel a lot with it, I really don't think this or really any 3D printed case for that matter is a good option because, well, it's still made of plastic, right? Plastic's gonna break a lot easier than metal. And I also think that the case maker here knows that because they are positioning this as an option for a home theater or console size PC. But if you are wanting something that will be a better option for travel, you can check out my video I did on the Gemcase C9 or the Velka 3. Those are made of steel and I think those would fare much better in that use case. Now, I would love to see them make another version of this using more durable materials so that you could, you know, use this for traveling. So for the CPU, I'm gonna be using the Intel i5-13400F. This is a last gen CPU with 10 cores. Six of those are performance cores and the other four are efficiency cores. So in my HD5 and Gemcase builds, I went with an AMD 7600, which is gonna be faster in games and a good AMD alternative to the 13400 that I'm using here. But I have found that it does run hotter when paired with the same CPU cooler like what is also needed here. Both of these CPUs have a 65 watt TDP, so they are within spec for low profile coolers like the Noctua L9A, which is my CPU cooler of choice right now for these small builds. However, when I use the 13400 in my Velka 3 build, I was much more impressed with the overall temps and noise levels, and so I want to use that again here. Plus, while the 7600 is faster in games, the 13400 is more than fast enough, and it really shouldn't bottleneck the 4060 in games. Now, I'm going to be plugging that into the ASUS ROG Strix B760i, probably an overkill motherboard for this build. You could absolutely get away with a board that is much cheaper without these overbuilt VRM heat sinks and other features I have here. But I do really personally like working with this board for all of my Intel builds. It's got Wi-Fi 6E built in, two M.2 slots, and more IO than I would ever use in a tiny gaming PC like this. 
I'm also gonna be using 32 gigs of DDR5 6000 RAM and a one terabyte 970 Evo. This standard 3.59 liter Yocto can support a CPU cooler up to 40 millimeters in height, which really doesn't leave us with a ton of options. Like I said earlier, my go-to here is the Noctua L9A. This one is 37 millimeters, which does leave a little bit of space between it and the panel to hopefully reduce any turbulence. Now with all of those pieces assembled, we've got a pretty compact motherboard set up here and we can actually start moving everything over to the case. The first piece I'm gonna drop in is the power supply. This case is designed to use a very limited selection of power supplies, including this one. This is the HD Plex 250. So this is a super small and slim gallium nitrate power supply. It's fully modular, it's passively cooled, so there are no fans, which will definitely help bring that total system noise down. It's much smaller than even the Flex ATX power supplies, which are the ones I would typically use in my small PCs. At 250 watts though, this is gonna be just enough to power the system. Under a full gaming load, I'm seeing it pull around 230 watts. So that really doesn't leave us with much headroom here, but it is just enough. Now you would likely max that out if you were running, you know, a CPU and GPU synthetic benchmark at the same time, but that's not very realistic. Even still, I decided to test it out myself and see what happens. I was pulling over 240 watts, which is really pushing the limits again, but the system held stable. Same with gaming. So that means I didn't have any shutdowns or issues, but the unit does get very hot. I can actually feel the heat transferring to the case and it's not hot enough to melt the plastic or anything crazy like that, so don't worry there, but I wouldn't recommend touching it immediately after running a game. Now, they also include a standard C14 power connection along with a much slimmer C6 option, which is also known as a cloverleaf connector. This is something you often see on laptop power bricks and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is attach that to the back and then place the power supply into the front of the case. Then we can grab our motherboard, align it with the four standoffs, and there's actually enough room between the bottom panel and the motherboard for that power cable. So I'm gonna place the motherboard on top of that and then secure the board to the case. Next up, we can connect our CPU and motherboard power cables along with the power button and LED. I am using some custom length cables here, so that is gonna make these runs look super clean and very easy to manage. Then the last thing to do here is the GPU. Now again, this is the low profile 4060 from Gigabyte, a very compact and slim GPU. I've used this model a few times, and I believe this, along with that single fan Zotac, are probably the most sensible 4060 GPUs out right now. The efficiency improvements in this generation of GPUs are effectively utilized here, and it's enabling us to have some impressively compact sub five liter builds that still have all the same performance you'd get from a standard size 4060. It's got the same TGP as well at 115 watts, which means that there's not enough power delivery from the PCI Express slot alone, like other low profile GPUs. So we'll also need to use an eight pin power connector here, which is cleverly hidden on the back. Now the case also includes a PCI Express riser cable, which I guess is kind of less of a cable and more of a 90 degree adapter, which also looks super clean. So you don't have to bend up a standard riser cable in questionable ways. So let's attach that to the GPU before installing it. And this is probably the trickiest part of the build. Uh -oh. Now, because of these giant VRM heat sinks on the motherboard I chose, there really isn't enough room for the GPU fingers on the PCI Express bracket. And you could probably get away without the bracket. The PCI Express riser cable is very sturdy and would hold it in place well enough, as long as you're not, you know, shaking your PC around. But still, I wanted to find a way to make it work. So I took the bracket off of the GPU and I was actually able to put the bracket between the motherboard IO and the back of the case first. Then I was able to plug in the GPU into the PCI Express slot on the motherboard, then re-secure the bracket to the card, and lastly, plug in that eight pin power connector. And with all that plugged in, we can just re-secure that top panel and that's the build complete. So taking a look at the performance and the 13400F is easily my favorite CPU to pair with this low profile cooler has absolutely no problems at all, keeping the CPU cool, even when it's pulling upwards of 70 watts. Now temps are around 65 to 70 degrees Celsius running around Night City in Cyberpunk 2077. I'm using ultra settings with all the upscaling and frame generation turned off at a native 1080p. It's also pulling that full 115 watts from the GPU with temps staying in the mid 70s. The finals is a more CPU intensive game and temperatures are only slightly higher here, remaining at a very reasonable 75 degrees Celsius. The GPU temperatures are similar to what we've seen in Cyberpunk in the mid 70s, and the system noise is sitting around 42 decibels. So quite low and unnoticeable in my opinion. Much quieter than when I paired this CPU cooler with a Ryzen 7600. I'm also not noticing any turbulence or high pitched noises when the fans are running. And overall, honestly, this is just a really enjoyable system to use. I started off doing some of these performance tests and 
kind of just got lost playing the finals for a few hours. With the low system noise and the really solid performance, I think I'm gonna be using this one myself as a living room gaming PC for a little while. So while the type of plastic being used here shouldn't soften or melt with, you know, just the heat of PC components, considering how hot that power supply would get, I did want to push around and make sure that none of the plastic would soften or melt from, you know, being exposed to that heat for a longer period of time. So anyways, after about an hour of playing, I did push around a little bit and I've noticed no softening of the plastic and no melting. So that's a good sign in my opinion. All things considered, a pretty easy and straightforward build in my opinion. It looks really good, it's very compact, clean cable management, and a very satisfying build. So if you're wanting to build something similar yourself, they are asking 150 pounds for this case. Uh, that does include the PCI Express riser cable, so that's a really nice addition. The slightly taller one that fits the two and a half inch drive, and also fits a slightly larger CPU cooler. I believe that's 10 pounds more, but these are also all handcrafted. So that means that the lead time on these is gonna takes a little bit longer, right? There's some manual labor involved in actually assembling each case for every order. I'll leave links for this case along with all the parts that I used in the description below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.